Hi guys, uh, welcome back to our channel, The Book Brood, and today we are doing a tag, and that is Toast, Toast to Minor, minor characters. characters. So this was originally done, done by Molly Reeds, and we'll link hers down below, and let's just jump into the questions. Alright, so the first one is, name a minor character you want to see more of. I went with Maggie from Old Man's War by John Scalzi. Uh, she was the original group that went through the, uh, the, the training and everything, so original friends. And I, I just wanted more of her character. She exited the story too soon. That's a good way to put it. Um, I chose Razor from The Infinite Sea. I don't think he was in the first one, The Fifth Wave. Um, but he was in this one, and I would have liked to see more, like, backstory or something. Mm -hmm. so. Deepen him up a bit. Yeah, I mean, he just had a complex kind of storyline that uh, kind of played out through mm -hmm. the story, and I... I would have liked some, you know, frame of reference, I guess. Okay. Some... Explanation for why he was the character he was. Mm hmm yeah. Next one is name a character that you would want to be friends with in real life. This one was so easy for me. Uriah from Divergent. My all-time favorite character of this series, hands down. Just like that? Yeah. All right, well... Mine's from my favorite book, too. Nice. And it's Dune, and it's Gurney Halleck. Uh, I would just love to have him as a best friend because he can teach you how to kill in a thousand different ways, and then he'll sing you a beautiful song at the end <laughs> of it. So, yes, Gurney, very much so, from Dune by Frank Herbert. Best book ever. <laughs> I'm never going to read it. One day you might. Okay, question number three. Name a minor character who bored you. Oh, that I went with Elizabeth from Frank Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Anytime he went off about her, it's just like, okay, yes, we know you're in love with the equivalent of your adopted sister. So, yeah. <laughs> awesome. She's referred; they're referred to as cousins, but they were raised together. Mm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, for me, that was actually Valentine Ender's sister, which is really. Weird. I really like Ender and I really like Peter, but I feel like Valentine's character was not strong enough. And she was just kind of boring. I found the relationship creepy. Yeah, I never got those creepy vibes. And you get it a little more in uh, Speaker for the Dead. Really? Yeah. Hmm. It's, uh, that's just me, though. All right. <laughs> next one was name a character who annoyed you. Okay, well, mostly this whole book annoyed me, but specifically Simon, the best friend of the main character who is in love with her, but she's so oblivious she doesn't know that. He was just annoying and didn't need to be there. I don't understand why he kept sticking around. Just Maybe he becomes important later on, but really it was just to have a human frame of reference instead of all the magical oh, people. Oh, oh. Audience perspective character. Huh? I guess. Yeah. Uh, mine, I went with Jackie Boone from Green Mars because I hate arrogant characters and she's one of the most arrogant characters I've ever read. Uh, so just did not like Jackie at all in this series. <laughs> huh. <laughs> mm. Okay, question number five. Name a minor character who grew on you. Uh, so for that one, I actually went with, this one I've read recently, Neil Stevenson's Cryptonomicon and Rudolph von Heckelberg, or Rudy. He, That's a fun name. Uh, it is a fun name, absolutely. He was kind of uppity in the beginning of the story, but then when you got to know him better by the, uh, by like, uh, about like by this, this point right here, you know. Like three quarters of the way through. Mm -hmm. Okay. He was. It, he he had a very touching storyline. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Okay, and for me, that was Ari. Um, she was such a minor character in *The Name of the Wind* mm -hmm. and 
what was the second one? Wise Man's Fear. But then she got her own little novella, and oh, oh my god. It definitely her. does put a different, or well, it's nice to get to her perspective and how she sees the world. Yeah. And slow regard of silent things. I absolutely love, 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 love this book. Yep. I think around six. All right. So that is Name a Character Who Broke Your Heart. And mine, you know, it was just very sad. Mike or... What's Sherlock's brother? Mycroft. Mycroft. Mycroft, Mike, Michelle, Senior Mike. The supercomputer. I uh, broke. Oh, that's what he was broke. named for? <laughs> mm-hmm. Sherlock's yep. brother. Nice. Yes. He named himself that because that's he awesome. loved the stories and identified so much with the Mycroft character. This is a great book. Amazing book. It'll be on my wrap up. So. You'll hear more about it. Awesome. And mine, I'm going to steal this back from you. Uh, mine was Alan. Um, yeah, I don't know how to say it. it just, you know, Spoilers. his storyline kind of broke my heart. I, I really liked him. Yeah. He was, That's, he was a, he was, I awesome really character. can't say very much, but yes. So. All right. Number seven is a minor character who made you laugh. All right. And I went with... The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss, and Alodin, the the master Alodin, um, who wasn't really a master of the council, right? He just didn't leave once. Uh, once it so was he up, had a, like an answer, honorary right? seat, but mm-hmm. I don't think his vote really counted. Right? Yeah, they kind of humored him, and he was rather insane, but very, very cool guy, very funny guy. See, uh, he was a character who, instead of growing on me, actually like. I lost interest in him. Mm. So. Once you got to know more of him, you lost interest? Yeah, I don't know if it's because, like, the second half of A Wise Man's Fear, like, you've got Quoth, like, chasing the wind or whatever, Mm -mm. and his horizons are broadening, and so you get back to school and he's not as, like, wise and mysterious of a character as, like, you originally think. Uh Uh-huh. But I don't know. Just because Quoth had gotten, I guess, closer to him in mm-hmm. understanding of, of uh, speaking. Isn't well, yeah, they were more on the same level of, like, mm-hmm. understanding. Because after everything that happened with um, him going to Fey land or whatever, the land of the Fey. Oh, did that affect us? Did it probably gave him a bump well, in ability or... Well, it, I mean, he was there for, like, 50 years, so... Mm-hmm. He was older and wiser, and they were more on the same level That's now. right. Yeah, that's right. He spent a lot of time there. Yeah, mm-hmm. even though... It, right. Yeah. Anyway, so... Will the third ever come out? We don't know. Never. I mean, it will never come out. <laughs> I, at this point... I'm, it's, you know... I don't know. Never, I've never written a book. Yeah. It, <laughs> it must be hard. I don't know. Okay. Uh, the character that made me laugh, and I wish I had a better third... Um, Copy, uh, Prisoner of Azkaban. But Oliver Wood from the Harry Potter series was hilarious to me in his just suicidal pursuit of, like, perfection in the Quidditch world. Like, that was just... He didn't care what was going on as long as you win. You win Quidditch, and that's it. Like, that's the only important thing. And the world works out. That's how you defeat Voldemort, is... You didn't even care about Voldemort. You win the... The Wizarding Co. What's the, the Quidditch World Cup? Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. He was just so funny in his idiosyncrasies. Now, I haven't read all through that one, but did uh, Oliver Wood have an opinion on the uh, the superstar Quidditch guy in, in number four? Is so it... I think Oliver graduates at the end of three. Ah, okay. So I don't think he's there for the fourth. And there's no Quidditch the fourth year. Oh. Because there's the Triwizard Tournament. I know that's mm-hmm. one of the big reasons I don't like the fourth book. It's because Quidditch was awesome in the books, and Oliver Wood made it just so funny. That'll be the first series I, I finish off after I finish my list. I'll, I'll finally read all the Harry Potter books. <laughs> Maybe. Because they are fun. They are fun. I just haven't gotten to them yet. I need to reread them. I really do. Okay, um, question number eight. Name a minor character who made you cry. You want to go first on this one? Yes. 
spread. Everybody knows, but it's still too soon. Fred, I need a minute. <laughs> For me, I went with Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale and The Daughter. I don't think it actually ever spoke her name in the book, but just the remembrance of Offred when she's mm. remembering that whole night them trying to escape and what happens to her husband and just the image of your child being forcibly removed from your grasp and you know they're screaming for you as you're as they're being pulled away it it just parent child tragedy always tears me up well and then she's shown a picture of her after several years have gone right. by and that mm -hmm. just really right because it's, she's alive but the circumstance that right that she's yeah that you know she's exactly in, in that society right you know you know what what her present is and you know what her future is going to be mm -hmm. yeah which is yeah oh that is sad all right so number nine is name a character who surprised you I had a little bit of trouble with this one, but I went with the character of Edward in the Anita Blake um, series by Laurel K. Hamilton. And he surprised me in that he started off as a complete badass. And by the later books, he turned into a whipped little weak just character. Anything for Anita? Kind of. Well, not necessarily yeah. for Anita, but just, like, in the beginning, he's more intense than she is. And mm -hmm. he's, like, almost a monster in, like, his... He's, like, a sociopath, and he just, like, hunts down and murders monsters. And then, all of a sudden, he, like, gets married and starts raising children, and he's, like... He still kind of kills things on the side, but... Uh -huh. It's like, dude, what? He wanted to settle down. Yes. You know, start a family and live the live the simple life, right? Uh, and kill a monster. Kind of. I mean, he so he he was using one of his alternate personalities or like like his another cover name or whatever, an alias. There you go. Mm -hmm. And he got so into this relationship that his alias was having with this woman, and it got to the point where they'd been dating for so long that she expected him to propose. And he's like, well, to keep my cover, you know, she's fine. She works with my, my lifestyle. So <laughs> mine as well, but she's got two kids. So, you know, I thought about it for a second, but then I just did it anyways. And it was just like, yeah. what? Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't have uh, any of the sequels, but, uh, they're actually, the sequels are more written by Gentry Lee than Arthur C. Clarke, but uh, in the Rama series, uh, Katie, the daughter, I just, I was really shocked at how awful of a character that she spiraled into, and it really, it, it disappointed me on, surprisingly disappointed me on a high level. I remember you talking about that, and I never really felt that so much. I feel like... I don't know. I was like, I was expecting so much of a spiral, and like, I feel like she just. It, yeah, it's. I don't know. And maybe, light spoilers, but she had such a strong relationship with Richard when she was a young child, and mm. then he disappeared for the two years, and. And of course, she felt abandoned by yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, you know her her parent that she was attached to disappeared at such a two, young and impressionable such, right and you know it, it they never they never got it quite back until it was too late. i think it, what didn't surprise me at all is the fact that well i guess what what surprised me is that the children were so well adjusted for their life like That's spending all i know though but spending more time in like cryo than actually mm. time up I thought like, it was weird that the Romans aged the children. Why would you do that? That does, doesn't make sense. Yeah. I, but you know, it, I guess it. I guess it got the story to a level that that the it author wanted to. to get. You know, right, right from. I guess, uh, man, the son just was a completely heart wrenching situation. I don't remember his name. It's been so long, but like, 
his amount of time out of cryo was like what five years or something because he was mm-hmm. the youngest put into cryo and then he spends like a little bit of time and then falls in love and gets sent off right like, chooses he, to to go on the yeah never dead sees end, his family again. yeah it's just like, oh how horrible well he had he had his wife and well i understand and one that of, one of her children you know, i it's but I mean, he had like the mental capacity of a six-year-old. I was just like, yeah, it was weird. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Gr- great series. I know some people Absolutely don't, don't like the sequels to them, but I, I think they're really good. I, I really. I had a them. really hard time getting into the first. Oh, Rama Two was hard. It was hard. It it just went because it's so different. Hardcore character story from. Mm-hmm. Rendezvous with Rama, which is which is a very event driven and yeah, and you don't even know who you don't even really see who the main character is for chapters and chapters into it, you know. But so. what I loved about that series, and I think it's the first series that I've ever had this happen to me, is you start the series thinking that the story is going to go one way, and then several times the story just keeps throwing you curveballs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and by the time you get to the end, you were just like. Okay, this was the story as I was expecting, and this is the story that I got. Yeah, just like the oh. scale and scope of it, which it's, is absolutely insane. Yeah, it's it's a great series. Obviously, great. we highly recommend it. Yeah. And the last question, number ten: Name a minor character you're reading about right now who is intriguing you. Right now, it's going to be Mrs. Who from A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Le Engel. I think I got that right the first time. I All think right. so. <laughs> uh, th- I, I'm really enjoying uh, picking this one back up. I'm trying to finish this one by the end of the week, so it can be in my uh, wrap-up coming up for July. Yep. Uh, but she's she's great. She quotes, um, she, she says things in all sorts of different languages before she says it in English, and that's part of her character is, is you know, she, she responds in, in some, you know, and it's, Sometimes it's Greek, sometimes it's Spanish, sometimes it's, you know, you know, a lot of this Cyrillic, you know. <laughs> so, hmm. No, it's, uh, it's fun. I like language. Even though I don't know a second one. <laughs> okay, I am currently reading All You Need Is Kill by, help me with this, Hiroshi. Hiroshi Sukurazaka. Mm-hmm. Saka, wait, hold on. Sakurazaka. Sakura 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 yes. Anyways, so this is uh, what did what was the final title? They live die live, repeat. Live die repeat. The, the, um, the source Emily, material. Emily mm. Blunt and Tom Cruise mm. movie with the mimics and the like Groundhog's Day, but like a war military version. Groundhog's Day. Yeah. So I'm reading this right now. It's really good. I'm about halfway through it. Um, but a character in here that's intriguing me is Sergeant Farrell. And I think it's because I saw the movie first. And so I just picture Bill Paxton, 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 Paxton yeah. as um, Sergeant Farrell. And in the books, he is totally different. And so every time he has a line or something, I, I hear it in Bill Paxton's voice first. And then I have to like mentally <laughs> shift into like the actual character. The book character. Mm. And it, it's just so intriguing. Yeah. That's so... Great. When I was reading through Cryptonomicon, it's a kind of historical fiction. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alan Turing's a character, and I just, I just saw Benedict Cumberbatch mm-hmm. because because of the Imitation Game, and was, yeah, yeah, makes sense. All right, so that was our toast to minor characters tag. If you have. Yep. If you've read anything, give us some comments, um, and we apologize if we started sweating through any part of it's this video. It's at 100 least 100 degrees, degrees in out here. right now. We had to turn the fans off to and, make this And video. close the window, too, because the blinds would rattle if, uh, if they were open. So, uh, give us a comment. Subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time. And if you do this video, please leave us a link down below. We would love to see it. This is a really fun one to make. It is a great one. <laughs> yes. Cheers.